Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and today, yes, I am here to give you guys my review of Batwoman episode 16. Oh god, Batwoman episode 16. Batwoman episode 16, I, I do not know what to say about this. In some ways, this episode made me happy, but at the same time it made me even more frustrated and I'll tell you why. But before I do, I do have to remind you that if you like my content and if you want to support my content, please, please, please consider clicking on the like button, sharing this video, and more importantly, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to let you know every single time I, I, I get a, a new video posted on this channel. Help me get this channel to a thousand subs. And if you do that, it's going to help teach the algorithm that you like content from independent creators such as myself and not these insane corporations that YouTube for some reason has chosen to pander to. Now, with all of that said, let's get to the review. Now, I said before in the intro that this episode made me happy, but in, in the say, at the same time, it made me even more and more frustrated. And again, I'll explain why. Because there are... <clears throat> And I can't believe I'm saying this. Believe me, I'm just as surprised as anyone that there was some good shit in this episode. There was good shit in this episode. I, I couldn't believe it. And again, I'll explain why I was so frustrated with this episode. I'll explain why. But like I said, there is good shit in this episode. Legitimately good stuff. I'm not kidding. I'll get to that. But at the same time, since this is Batwoman and since this is the CW, but for, so for some reason there just has to be just absolutely abysmal shit at the same time. There's some good shit, but there's bad shit. And I just, ugh. Okay, let's, before we get to the, before I talk about the things that I liked and things that I didn't like, let's talk about the overall plot when it comes to the episode. So, there are a couple of things happening in this episode. The one thing is that there is the main plot with Kate and Alice, and then there's a subplot or there, actually, there are two subplots, one with Sophie and one with Luke and Mary. Let's talk about the A-plot for a second. The A-plot is basically this. Alice asks Kate to help her break Mouse, to help her find Mouse. And when she does find Mouse, she's going to take him and they will leave the city. Odds are they're still going to continue killing people, but at least they won't be in Gotham. So, no, no, mm -mm, not my problem. Mm -mm, no, ew. Anyone who isn't in Gotham isn't my problem. And I'll get to why that pissed the why that part pissed me off so much. And then when it comes to Sophie, when it comes to what's going on with Sophie in this episode, basically, if you remember from the uh, a couple of episodes ago, they found out that there was a mole inside the crows. So Jacob ends up asking Sophie to look into this because he, at this moment, cannot trust so cannot trust anyone inside the crows. And Sophie says, "Okay." Despite the fact that, you know, you suspended me and the fact that I'm still in love with Batwoman. I mean, she doesn't say she's still in love with Batwoman, but, but she is. She might as well have. Because that's all the show cares about. You know, gay, clam juice, vaginas. Let's continue. And then there's the, uh, the other subplot. The one that involves Luke and Mary. And one of these, one of these three was really, really good. I think you can already eliminate one of them. I think you already know which one already has no chance of actually being good. Yeah, you, you already guessed. It's it's the one that involves Kate. Now, you remember when I said that there are some legitimately good shit in this episode? Guess what? None of it has to do with Kate. Or none of it has to do with Ruby Rose. Because look, I am sorry. No offense to Ruby Rose. Despite the fact that her she can get seriously insane with the politics. I have nothing against Ruby Rose. I just think she's seriously miscast in this in this role. Because I am sorry, she cannot act. Okay, she just, she just, she can't act. Okay, I'm sorry, she can't. Okay, there are scenes where she tries, but at the same time, it looks like she isn't. Like, she's just doing, she's, she is, she insists on doing the bare minimum. Ugh. All right, let's get into the, uh, again, I want to talk about the Kate and Alice stuff first before I get to the, uh, the Sophie stuff and the, uh, the Luke and Mary stuff. Let's talk about Kate and Alice first. So, when, so like I said, Alice asks Kate, to help her find Mouse, and then once she does find Mouse, she will take him and leave the city. And oh my god! Or oh no no sorry sorry before I before I get to that, let's talk about what happened at the beginning of the episode. Because oh my god, if you remember from the previous episode, Kate killed someone. Yes, Kate actually murdered someone in cold blood. 
She murdered August Cartwright, Mouse's father. She murdered him. And guess what? Does she face any responsibility for what she did? No. No, of course not. Her father comes in and covers up the whole thing. He doesn't send her to jail where she belongs because she broke the law by killing someone. No, no, that doesn't happen. Let's just, of course, of course, because Kate is everything. Kate is love. Kate is life. We need to do everything for her. Fuck this show. So he buries the body and then Alice gets away and says, if you try to follow me, I will expose you. And she is 100% right or she that is a valid threat because their DNA is all over the body. Because everyone in the show is a moron. Now, now that we've got that out of the way, and that's important, remember that. that the way I just said about Kate killing someone, remember that. And, and the fact that Jacob tried to cover it up, it'll get into one of the reasons why I'm so fucking frustrated with this episode. Despite the fact that there's some really good shit in it. Anyway, Alice and Kate... Or Kate agrees to help Alice. Now she and Alice go over to a woman who used to be a nurse at Arkham because they find out that Mouse is apparently tracking the nurses that he had when he was at Arkham in order to help him. So they track down one of them and they give her some bullshit story and she lets her and now there was something wrong with this scene. And that's the fact that Kate and Alice went in there without disguises. Alice, who is the most wanted person in the city, just walks in there with no dis- with no disguise. Just, just brilliant, brilliant, perfect, perfect. CW, you, you, you really know how to write your shit. So they go in, and she says, uh, or she ends up calling the crows, and she tells them, like, I've been working at Arkham for years. I know a fake story when I hear one. And then instead of just you know, disarming her and then running away. No, they decide to knock her out. They decide to knock her out. Uh, yeah, so you just knocked out a uh, an old woman. You lied, impersonated an officer, or and you in order to break into someone's home. And again, she's not going to face any punishment for any of this. No, 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 no punishment for Kate. No, she, she, if she, if you punish her, she, she won't be able to drink clam juice, and we can't have that. No, that's our that's the driving point for our show, which is Oh my god. Anyway, they run away and something happens here that you seriously let let this moment sink in. They capture Mouse and Jacob is there pointing a gun at him. Now, do you want to know what happens? Because Jacob is looking at the man who's responsible for murdering his wife. Let me just give you a, a little bit of a background on Jacob in case you forgot. Jacob is someone who lost his wife to a car accident and believed for years that he lost his daughter, one of his daughters along with along with her. Jacob finds someone get gets married to her Thinks that, you know, maybe now that I've, maybe, you know, I, I suffered something horrible. I lost my wife. I lost one of my daughters. You know, I thought that I would probably never be able to have, be with someone ever again. He meets someone who helps him move on. Or who helps him believe, or who helps him believe that, you know, maybe I can't be happy. He gets married. And then finds out that the woman he thought would help him move on with his life ended up Faking his daughter's death, which is so fucking sick, you is it's absolutely insane that the show actually tried to justify it. Finds out about this, and then the person, and then someone kills her, and that person is sta- is right there in front of him the entire time. Is, is, or the uh, right there in front of her at the moment. If anyone in the show has a right to go crazy, it would be Jacob. But do you want to know what he does? He puts away the gun and he takes him in. He does the right thing. He t- puts away the gun and he locks him away 
and lets the uh, the legal system take care of it. Kate, remember when I said what Kate did? Remember what I said about how Kate killed, um, about how Kate killed August? They tried to frame it as if August was the one who killed who killed her mom. August did not kill her mom. Your mom died in that car accident. Jacob just found her head, thought, now granted, I'm not, I'm not even trying to remotely justify what August did. In fact, I think everyone except maybe Jacob is absolutely sick. Now granted, Jacob's done some really dumb, th- dumb shit in this show, but, well, him, Luke, and as much as I hate her, Mary. Eh. Jacob had every right to go crazy out of, all of the people in this, sh- out of all the characters in the show, he is definitely one of the people who had every right to go crazy, but he didn't. And yet, Kate, who was supposed to be Kate, this this chick right here, Kate, who is supposed to be the hero of the show, the one that people are supposed to root for, ends up killing someone in cold blood because she, for some reason, blames him for her mother's death. Now, if you want to blame him for, you know, kidnapping Alice, that I can understand. But even then, even then, it doesn't justify you killing him because he didn't, he did not kill your mother. Now, now I know some people might say, well, God, well, I mean, didn't, didn't August kill Beth? Well, yes, yes, and he should be blamed for that. But you guys need to remember one thing. Do you remember why Beth was here in the first place? Do you remember why Beth was here in a completely different universe where nobody remembers her and the, and she or her counterpart happens to be a wanted criminal responsible for the death of millions? Do you know who's responsible for putting her here? Do you remember who's responsible? This person right here. This person right here is responsible for her, is responsible for that. Her death is on her because she is a selfish piece of, selfish piece of shit who only cares about herself. Kate is not a hero. Kate is a horrible human being who only ever does things for herself. And she, and as if that was bad enough, she ends up adding a body. She now has a body count. You know, among the uh, the others that are technically her fault because she keeps letting Alice go. Kate is a fucking piece of shit. I just, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I've been wanting to get that off my chest for a while. Every time I do my reviews, it's just. Ugh. Anyway. Kate ends up believing because Alice tells her that, oh, guess what? I manipulated the whole thing. I sent August to you so you could ask him about what happened to mom, so to, to mommy, and then you would end up killing him so you would be like me. No, 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 no. Okay, you... Did not manipulate shit. There... (coughs) Excuse me. There is no fucking way you could have predicted that she would do any of this shit. There is no way you could have predicted any of this. Stop pretending. Now. Now we get to the part of the episode that I thought was kind of good. I'm not going to lie. And for, for some reason, it involves Kate and Alice. But it has nothing to do with Kate. It's mostly Alice, which is, I guess, no surprise. Anyway, she agrees to help him. She agrees to help him find Mouse. And she says, but I'll only do it if you promise not to kill anyone. I mean, Kate, remember, you made her do that. Pro- you made her make that promise before. And she broke it like it was nothing. Although this time, when you see it, 
it looks like she actually means it. And again, this is all credit to Rachel Skarsgård or Skarsden's acting. Again, she is the only one putting in a good, trying to put in a good performance in this in this shit show. So they head over to Arkham. They break in. They beat up the guards, and the choreography looked like crap because, of course, because of course it did. And uh, God, what happens next? Anyway, they get the keys that they need to open the lock to the cell that Mouse is in. Anyway, Alice gets in, and guess what happens? Now, what? Because what happens here? I did not predict this. And the reason why I did not predict this isn't because I'm dumb. No, no, I didn't predict this because after 15 fucking episodes, I pretty much have an expectation as to what's going to happen. Remember, I fully expected Kate to go along with this. I fully expected Kate to just say, yeah, okay, now you got mouse, now get the fuck out of my town. But guess what happens? She locks, she locks her in. She locks her in. And I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, oh my god, wait, are you, are you actually going to have Kate do the right thing here? Are you actually, are you actually going to have Kate do the right thing for once? And she did. Kate actually did the right thing. She put her in Arkham. Finally, finally, she did the right thing. Finally, and it's just... Anyway, uh, she locks her in, and Alice says... Uh, Alice is basically begging her to, to, to let her out and all that thing. Kate says no, and Jacob's there. And they revealed something interesting. So apparently they revealed that it was all part of the plan. That Kate told Jacob what was going to happen, and they planned this from the beginning. Now, I have a question about that. If you did plan this from the beginning, what about all the guards that you gave concussions to? In fact, one of them you even stabbed in the leg. You stabbed a guy in the leg, you could have hit an artery and he would have bled to death. So I don't get, was that all part of the plan too? Or oh God, what? whatever, who cares? And then we get a scene between Kate and Jacob and I thought this was okay for once this was a good scene they are actually showing remorse like they they do not feel good about this although it's good within the context of the episode but when you think about it in the entire show it's confusing because jacob aren't you also the one who told sophie to shoot to kill if you find alice i mean i just and you also like when you thought when you thought um Sophie was dead or Alice was or Beth was dead you you went to the uh, the the morch the, the morgue and you did the whole kissing on the forehead thing like you didn't even give a shit so why is it now like you're you're pretending you oh, God, who, who cares who cares it's dumb and then we get another scene with Kate which I'm saving I want to save that for the end cuz <sighs> Give me this show. Wait, let's wait for that. Now the reason why I I, I sort of dra dragged on a bit with Kate now is because when it comes to the the other subplots, there isn't really that much to talk about. The only thing I really want to talk about is is the the Luke and Mary stuff. But I'll get the Sophie stuff out of the way. So when it comes to uh, Sophie, um, there isn't really that much to uh, to do with her. Like her plot's basically simple. Uh, she's asked to, like I said, investigate the whole, um, you know, the mole in uh, in the crows. And while she's doing that, she um, she's basically investigating the uh, the murder of Lucius Fox. And she, um, like, she goes over to, uh, to someone's apartment because this person is supposed to be a key witness in what happened. She was supposed to go over there and ask her some questions. But when she goes, to, when she gets to her apartment, she finds the woman dead. And she sees like uh, uh, you know the, uh, the the red dot on her uh, on her uh, on her shirt, and she knows like oh this is from a sniper. So she quickly, or no, someone pushes her out of the way, and it turns out to be Julia Pennyworth. If you remember her from a few episodes ago, 
And Julia Pennyworth, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about her, other than the fact that she's a shit secret agent. And when it comes to Julia Pennyworth, I'll... Oh, God, there's something I want to talk about with her. Anyway, that's basically the thing that goes on with Sophie. Uh, anyway, she ends up calling... Or, or something else happens. She ends up calling Jacob on a burner phone, which I thought was smart. And she tells him about everything, you know, about the witness being dead and everything. And then Jacob also sees a red dot on his uh, shirt. So he manages to uh, jump for cover. And then he uses, like, the mirror of a car to be able to tell where the uh, the, uh, the the sniper is. And he's able to get a shot. And, and he, but right, but right as he, uh, he gets to him, he, uh, he asks him, uh, like, who hired you? But the guy dies before he gets a chance to answer, uh, which sucks. Okay, so that's the stuff with Sophie and, I guess, in part, Jacob. Now let's get to uh, Luke. Now, again, this for me was the best part of the episode. Without a doubt, this is the best part of the episode. And again, this ties into why I'm so fucking frustrated with this episode. So what's going on is Luke goes over to the hearing of the uh, the guy he believes to be the, the person who murdered his father. And while he's there, we get this nice moment with him and Mary. Now, Mary, I have not liked her all season. She sucked. She was absolutely terrible. But she gets there and she puts a hand on him. And the entire time, Luke and Mary are acting like actual people, which made me actually empathize with them. Luke acted like someone who is in the same room as the, a person they believe is responsible to be the, is responsible for the death of someone that you cared about. And Mary actually felt like a supportive friend. Mary gets there and she tells him, Look, considering that I'm someone who knows what it's like to lose a, a, a parent, trust me when I say that alone is the last thing you want to be at this moment. And it felt genuine and I am loving it. I was surprised. I thought, holy shit, this is good. This is good. Where? Mm. I'll, I'll save that. I'll, I'll save it for later. Anyway, the uh, the guy gets off free because apparently there wasn't enough evidence to uh, convict him. And yet I'm sitting here wondering, okay, so wait, so if you let him go because there wasn't enough evidence to convict him, then why was he uh, ever convicted? I mean, okay, so yeah, they coerced the confession out of him, but even if he did convince, if there's no evidence to, to say that like, did no one at the time think it was weird that this guy confessed despite the fact that there's barely any evidence to uh, to, to put him away in the first place? I don't know. It's just, I, I just think, I just thought it was a little weird. So, anyway, the guy gets gets off free. It, or it doesn't get off free. They say that this is grounds for a retrial. So they want to uh, convene again when they have enough evidence. Anyway, he, he leaves. Now, we cu cut to a scene where he's apparently walking down the street with his grandma and Luke goes over there to confront him, which is basically the same as uh, if you remember in Batman Begins when Batman confronts uh, the, uh, the the guy who killed his, um, his parents. And I thought this scene was actually pretty damn good. Like, I'm not going to lie. The acting was pretty damn good. So he walks up to him and he asks him, why did you kill my father? And he tells him, dude, I didn't kill your father. Look, I was um, I was at the store. You know, I, I went in for a bag of chips. This is a story. I went in for a bag of chips. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up. I've got the gun in my hand and your father's blood on me. Now, I mean, the story is kind of iffy, but okay. And anyway, he tells him. That I know your dad was proud of you, and Luke tries to tell him, "Don't, don't, don't try to act like you knew, you know, you know anything about my father." And he tells him that, "Well, I knew he was proud of the fact that you got into MIT." And Luke is asking, him, "Wait, how do you, how do you know that?" And he said that because he wouldn't stop bragging about it. He said that while I was in there, he kept saying, "Listen, everybody, my son is gonna change the world. You heard it here first. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is good. This is good. We, this is nice. Like I." <laughs> this I'm saving that, and right before he, um, right as he's talking, Luke notices a red dot on the uh, the criminal's uh, chest, 
and he gets shot. And he he tries to uh, like he tries to stop the bleeding. He tries to give him CPR, and he's screaming for help. And at this point, I was worried. Okay, please please tell me they're not gonna do the usual uh, like misunderstanding. Luke gets misunderstood as the person who uh, like killed him or whatever. Thankfully, they didn't do any of that. So we cut to a scene where Luke is coming back. He gets to the uh, the clinic, the abortion clinic that Mary runs. Um, and the entire scene I thought was pretty well acted. The The guy's name who plays Luke, I'm blanking out his name, but I think I remember his name is Dominic, and I think the woman's name is Nicole. Their acting was actually pretty damn good in this. And again, they felt like actual people. Now, after saying, and after I got, finally got done with all of this, there are two things that I still want to talk about. One that involves the ending. Which I'm saving for last, but the first thing that I want to get, I want to say is this. The first thing I want to just is this. Seeing all of this, this episode, I'm sitting here wondering, why in the ever loving fuck did we not get this for fifteen fucking episodes? Fifteen episodes of fucking shit. We had 15 episodes of some of the most garbage writing that I've ever seen. And yet here we are. We get an episode that had some decent writing at the least. And I'm just sitting here watching. Why couldn't you have given this from the beginning? Why couldn't you have given any of us this kind of writing since the beginning, since episode one? Why are you doing this now when millions of people have already given up on your show? Jesus Christ, these people! This is why I'm so frustrated. It's because we, we... We we finally get some good shit in an episode. And I'm just... And all it does is remind me... Or it makes me realize why... Could we have gotten this since episode one? If you had... N- Barely anyone would have complained about your show. I mean, the most that people would have said was, yeah, okay, it's fine, but it's average at the most. But that's leagues better than what people are already saying about your show, that it's a trash fire, that this is shit writing, that nothing in this show made sense. Excuse me, nothing in this show makes sense. And by the way, I am fully, and I mean fully, expecting the show to go back to its regularly scheduled programming of dog shit i'm fully expecting the show's quality to go back to dog shit by next episode fuck this show fuck the people working on it fuck everyone on this show okay last thing that i want to talk about before i end this review because i i'm afraid this has probably gone on a little bit longer than i expected it to and that's the ending I fucking hated the ending. So Kate's on a um Kate's in the uh the office that she stole from Bruce. And she's sitting there drinking. And then Julia shows up and she asks her, "Hey, what's going on?" Now now I want you to keep something in mind. Julia said that she was on her way here because she wanted to check on Luke because she heard about what happened with the Lu- with the Lucius Fox case. She came here because she wanted to check on Luke. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So she walks over to uh, to Kate and she asks her, hey, what's going on? And Kate said something that we have all been saying since episode one. I'm not the, I'm not the hero this city believes I am. Yes, 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 yes. You are not a hero, Kate. You are a selfish piece of shit who only ever cares about one thing. You only care about getting what you want from whoever you, who, from whoever you want. You care about getting what you want, who you want, and it doesn't matter the cost. That is the kind of person that you are, Kate. Fuck you. And do you know what? Do you know what happens here? Julia doesn't even try to tell her the right things. She doesn't even try to tell her because Kate says, and Kate said something that I just just cemented the fact that she's a piece of shit. She says, I killed someone and I don't even feel guilty about it. I killed someone 
and I don't even feel guilty about it. And instead of responding the way any person would respond, Julia instead says, Eh, whatever, it's fine, don't worry, you're fine. Oh my god. Fuck this show. Fuck this show. This show will take any opportunity to tell Kate that despite the fact, despite everything you've done, you are still a good person. They will try to validate everything she does. Letting a criminal go multiple, multiple times, which cause, which is the cause of death for so many people in this city. It's insane. And then she goes ahead and kills someone in cold blood and people still try to justify it. Fuck this show. And then... And then, and then we get the, we, we, we are back. This is why I said we're going to go back to our weekly, to our regularly scheduled programming of shit. Literally the last thing that happens in this show or in this episode is they start making out. They start making out because we had to remember you. This show's about lesbies. This show's about vaginas. This show's, this show's specialty is clam juice. Oh. the show oh yeah do you remember what i said about julia saying that she came here because she wanted to find luke because she probably wanted to console him after what happened she wanted to check on him yeah fuck that i i've got clam to drink fuck this show fuck this show again this episode it made me happy in some ways but at the same time it just pissed me off even more than any of the other episodes and i didn't even think that was possible but anyway that's uh, that's the episode that's episode 16 <laughs> join me for episode 17 if you want to know any more about this shit show again i watch these episodes so you guys don't have to if you haven't watched any episode of this shit god bless you god bless you you have dodged a bullet but anyway that is all that is all i have for this video Thank you so much for watching up until this point. You guys have been awesome. And if you want to support me and if you like my content, if you want to support my content, remember to like and share and more importantly, subscribe and click on the bell icon to let you know every single time I post a new video. Help me get this channel to a thousand subs. And as always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I always love listening, hearing from you guys. And that is going to be it. Bye.